Hello and welcome to Varsity Blue. Boy, guys, it seems like that Tate Magic against Notre Dame was just mm -hmm. eons ago. It seems so, <laughs> Quite so a while. far Quite away. A while. Mm -hmm. Of course, saying that after a 35 to 10 loss to, of all teams, Penn State at home, making that overall First time series. in 10 years, Alex. Yeah, since 1996, so that At home, anyway. More, oh, at, more than 10 years. Yeah, since 1996 was the last time. And of course, Joe Pa said he doesn't think the Big House is a difficult place to play, considering it's he outrageous. hasn't won there in 13 years. But <laughs> perhaps, you know, 13 years when you're 800 years old, you know, it seems like the blink of an eye, anyhow. <laughs> well, initial reactions, guys. We'll start with you, Scott. A little, a little disappointing, a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah, it was it was a rough game, especially the past the two games that Michigan lost previously against Michigan State and Iowa. There was at least glimmers of hope coming from that game. Tate with that last second drive against Michigan State, uh, they did some good things against Iowa. There were very few glimmers of hope on Saturday. It was just an overall nasty nasty day. I mean, I you know to to build on that, I just I see this game as as the first game that really opened my eyes and unveiled this two team to me. I don't know if I if I really think that, you know, they're exactly what I thought they were. You know, they've they've built a, they've gone a far away from last from last year. It's definitely That's something sure. we can remember. Yep. But, you know, maybe we uh, overstepped our <laughs> our bounds a little bit. <laughs> Expectations, <laughs> you know, grew a little bit too rapidly or went <clears throat> too high too soon. Well let's take a look and see exactly what happened. Don't worry, more emphasis on the first half than the second half. We'll make it too painful. But here you go, right off the bat, Michigan looked good, just like the Penn State game last year, actually. Similarities, creepy. Tate Force found Greg Matthews there for seven yards. There's Carlos Brown running for seven. Here's Martavius Odoms with a big catch right there. Seven more yards, but David Mulk injured on that play. He would come back later. This is the first game since breaking that foot. Ends up tearing his ACL a little bit later. That's going to do it for the season for David Mulk. But Michigan is still moving without their starting center. Went back to that same line combination. That was Brandon Miner up the middle. Here's Tate Forcier keeping it. Both of those runs went for eight yards. Things looking good for Blue early. Dominating this Penn State defense. And here Odom's great balance there. Tweaks his ankle on the play, but he's only day to day. <laughs> so some casualties on this drive. But it was all worth it. Brandon Miner, Miner rage. One yard touchdown run. Michigan up 7-0. On that first drive, things are looking really, really good for Blue early. Every time that's happened, though, Michigan has lost a game at literally every single time. And here comes Penn State. There's Daryl Clark finding Derek Moy. We're going to hear his name one, more than once. And Jonas Mouton did not contain. Oh, uh, that's all on Jonas right there. There's Evan Royster. He's a pretty good back. 41 yards there. He only averaged 3.7 yards to carry in the entire game, minus that run. A little consolation, I think. And then here, a touchdown pass to Graham Zug, one of three that he caught on the day, 7-7. Seven to seven. On the ensuing drive, Michigan trying to get something going. Kelvin Grady with the drop right there on third down. He actually had a drop on first down as well. And you can see the storyline starting to be written right there. Michigan mistakes, Penn State execution. Here's Dell Clark looking downfield. His receivers were open all day right there. A big play to Zug again. Sets up a 34-yard field goal for Penn State, 10 to seven. Things still okay, but the offense continuing to struggle here. A near interception thrown there by Tate Force, and then this time, instead of making a decision, decides not to, scrambling around, looking for something, anything. Penn State spied on Tate Force all game, and he ended up with only, I think, 14 rushing yards. But the Michigan running backs did find some daylight. There's Carlos Brown up the middle for 17 yards, but on third and short, Tate sacked. <laughs> A pattern we would see repeated over and over again. The defense in the first half was not bad. There's Brandon Graham got their first OBE Zay finishing off that loss of yardage. And then in comes Shoelace. We asked for him earlier this game. We saw him earlier. Nice run up the middle right there. And then finding Kevin Coger. Ah, uh, Kevin Coger. Drop on second down. That would have been a huge play almost down to Penn State's 20. And then Denard, of course, showing his usual passing prowess or lack thereof with that interception. And then the, t the possession of death. A hold, a false start, and a safety. Makes it 12 to seven, Penn State. And then Daryl Clark finding Quarles, or Corliss, his tight end, up the seam. No safety help for Obize on that one. He ended up looking pretty bad, but it wasn't all his fault. And Penn State out to a 19 to seven lead at this point. But Michigan, it's crunch time. That means they're gonna play pretty well. Time running out in the half. That was a Greg Matthews catch, a Brandon Miner run up the middle, another Brandon Miner run up the middle. Tick-tock, tick-tock. Time running out for Michigan. 
Tay Force A gets the call from the sideline again. Another Brandon Miner run up the middle. Now only about 30, 45 seconds left here. Tate has to fall on it. What's going to happen? Clock is running. Michigan's out of timeouts. Took a couple ill-advised timeouts early in the game. Ball is spiked. Only 13 seconds left. Michigan is forced to settle for a field goal. Obviously in a situation where they did not want to do that. 19 to 10 is the final is the score at the half. Penn State on top. Penn State comes right back. First drive of the second half. Touchdown. They go for two. Don't get it. 25-10, but the defense still standing strong. Brandon Graham, three and a half tackles for a loss in this game. He had a very, very good game for a defensive lineman, but every time the defense gave the offense a little bit of light, the offense decided to mess it up somehow. There's a Denard Robinson fumble right there, and then Daryl Clark finds, who else? Graham Zug, 17 yards, touchdown Penn State. 32-10 to 10 at this point, and again, some opportunities created for Michigan by themselves. Brandon Graham here, another one of his masterpieces in this game. A blocked punt, perhaps things, you know, perhaps Michigan, a 22-point comeback at home. We've seen stranger things happen. But remember, Carlos Brown likes to put the ball on the turf, just like everyone else has seen on this Michigan team. Last in turnover differential in the Big Ten, and it came back to bite Michigan once again. Final score of 35 to 10 at the Big House, guys. Penn State hadn't won at Michigan Stadium since 1996, as we mentioned. Michigan's still 10 and 5 all time against Penn State, but the last two years, Penn State's come out on top easily. We own Penn State. Perhaps should be we owned Penn State. 250 yards of total offense, lowest output of the season for Michigan. Guys, we'll start with you, Andy. Badness all over the place. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, this was an extremely disappointing loss um, uh, in every manner. If you look at the offense, I believe it's one of the first things. Uh, you, got, you got the stat right up there, 250 total yards. That's the lowest output of the season. Um, it, was, it was just pretty ridiculous. When, when you see the times that Michigan is really succeeding on offense, it's when they're giving the ball to Brandon Miner. I, that's, that's the simplest way to put it. Um, and, you know, the, you saw in that first drive, they're going up against a banged-up Sean Lee. You know, an extremely inexperienced Penn State secondary that really hasn't done all that well this year. Yet, you know, there, there's nothing for it to show for it. Um, I, I just, I don't really understand uh, a lot of Rich Rod's play calling and the way that he just went through his progressions. And right, we were talking about this a little bit earlier, Scott, before the show. Brandon Miner, Carlos Brown averaged four and a half yards a carry mm -hmm. in this game. The run game was working, but yeah, it I seemed hate, like the pass game to. was resorted to way too early. Yeah, I hate to beat a dead horse. It seems like every week when we come on the show, it's just me and Andy ripping on the play <laughs> calling and not giving the ball to Brandon Miner and Carlos Brown. Here's stat for you. The first drive of the game, six carries by Brandon Miner and Carlos Brown combined. The rest of the game, 14 total, three points. That's not a coincidence in my book. You dance with the one that brought you. They score touchdowns by handing the ball off to Brandon Miner and Carlos Brown. And I'll give credit, David Wilk went out, but the line played very well opening up holes even when he wasn't in the game. Yeah, you're saying four and a half yards a carry between those two. They were playing well, and I, uh, maybe they were getting a little frustrated because they were getting behind, but there was still plenty of time to run the ball, and it's just inexplicable to go away from what your bread and butter is and has been throughout the year. Yeah, well, one of the biggest mistakes, of course, the turnovers, as we've talked about over and over again this year, five against Iowa, four here. I count it as five because I'm counting the safety as one of those turnovers. Naturally, naturally. But let, let's move on to these, the injury front. So David Mulk out for the year with an ACL, as I mentioned earlier. And also, Tate Forsey, 13 for 30 in this game, Andy. Can we attribute that to weather? Is Tate perhaps hurt? It seems like he's definitely getting himself up off the turf a little bit slower than we saw earlier in the year. I mean, this is something uh, we talked about a couple of years or a couple of weeks ago, as far as uh, you know, Tate possibly being hurt and no one knowing about it. You know, Rich Rod, you know, throwing the wool uh, the wool over everyone's eyes. But to be honest, I, I don't know if I see that. Um, you could just be talking about him being cold. He's from Southern California, San Diego. I, I don't know if he really is used to this type of this type of weather uh, and playing in this, those types of situations. This is quite tough on quarterbacks. You, 